Okay, so uh, uh, over the past, uh, sorry, just quickly, okay. Over the past 50 years in, a, in the field of SLA, one biggest question is, uh, uh, one of the biggest question is uh, what's the best way to learn, teach second language pronunciation. And uh, uh, researchers have also shown that uh, uh, even if you have uh, second language learners with the exact same age and same level of motivation, and let's say they practice a target language exact same way, spending exact same amount of time with the same level of intensity, uh, the outcomes are still subject to uh, uh, individual differences in terms of how fast they can learn and also in terms of how far they can go. And uh, there's so many factors affecting these individual differences. And uh, one probably the hotly debated topic as of 2022 in the field of SLA is to identify the source of uh, uh, individual variation. In other words, let's find out the mechanism underlying successful second language speech learning. And again, as I said, there are so many factors, but uh, uh, our team uh, has proposed something very, very simple. Basically, uh, having a good year in a scholarly term, auditory processing, this explains a lot. And <clears throat> what is uh, auditory processing, if you don't know? That is the uh, domain general perceptual ability uh, to encode basic lower order acoustic information. What is it? That's the pitch formants, usually operationalizes hertz and duration and intensity. And because uh, this, this skill is, is different from the relatively higher order cognitive skills such as attention, control, and memory. And because this is the first skill that you need when you encounter uh, oral language input, if, if you, any individual variation at this stage is strongly associated with the speed of first language acquisition, and also the uh, incidence of language impairment. So in the cognitive psychology, uh, 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 also psycholinguistics, this topic has been researched a lot. And therefore, uh, I formed a research team uh, comprising faculty members, as well as the postdoc and PhD students. And we try to generalize this framework uh, to the context of adult second language speech learning. So here is a very quick summary of what we have found so far. It's obviously uh, everybody can achieve comprehensible, intensible pronunciation. You can be a functional second language user as long as you practice every day, as long as you spend enough time practicing the, the language. But in terms of like, a, again, how far they can go, the ultimate attainment and how fast they can pick up second language pronunciation, we, we can see that there's a great individual variation which is tied to the uh, auditory processing, how, how well, how, how, how small difference you can hear. Okay, so uh, that was a story so far actually. And uh, I, uh, uh, but uh, since then I have been getting a lot of questions from especially uh, young researchers who you know, love this type of new, new topic, but wanna use it in their research program. So our research team has been convinced and we should really uh, release the uh, freely available, downloadable, uh, of offline auditory processing tests that everybody can use by using their own computer for actually not only research, but also teaching purposes. Uh, uh, Ingrid Mora, you used to think that these two uh, uh, previous uh, lab members actually took the initiative. So uh, we created a website, which is called the SLA Speech Tools. So this is the first time actually I'm introducing this website to everyone. Um, <clears throat> So this is how you can find. Uh, if you go to uh, Google and just uh, uh, type uh, SLA uh, speech tools and you can find there. So then you can go there and then this is how, you know, uh, what the website looks like. And then as you can see here, this website is not only for the researchers but also for teachers. So uh, if you go to the teacher tools, and then uh, you can find a range of uh, pronunciation teaching materials that uh, our team has ever used in our research. And you can teach pronunciation explicitly. I'm talking about second language English, but obviously it's important to introduce communicative activities where you can learn second language pronunciation. But most importantly, as you may know, TBLT is now coming to the pronunciation. So that's the, another exciting topic as of 2022. So uh, we have some materials about TBLT and pronunciation there too. But today let's focus on the research tools. And we have uh, offline auditory processing tools as well as a bunch of questionnaire tools that you can also use to, to investigate individual differences in second language speech learning and huge credits thanks to the uh, 
Jean-Marc Levalet, he also is a, a very key member for, for this uh, uh, website project as well. So now let's talk about the uh, uh, auditory processing test that we, we, we have created. Now we are sharing with you. So we follow the two-way auditory processing model. So what does that mean? So first important distinction is the type of processing. That's the uh, acuity, uh, how, uh, how small difference we can hear in acoustic signals, one particular acoustic signal. The other one is the audio motor integration. This is the ability that you need to hear something, convert that into some motor action. <clears throat> the other dimension, that, uh, 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 crucial dimension is the uh, type of signals. So you are processing uh, spectral, so frequency related information or rhythm, uh, tempo related information. Uh, uh, and uh, following this model, we have created one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, individual tests that you can use right away. Okay, so uh, if, if you have ever attended my talk or uh, ELSRF members, I have done this a million times. <laughs> <laughs> I was always laughing that uh, it, you know, one day I'll release this for general public today that it has come. So, but for everyone to know what this, what this looks like, I'm gonna do some demo, okay? And uh, for ELSRF members, you have done this a million times, so you should be able to get the right answers today. But anyway, uh, so it's a very simple AXP discrimination task. You hear three sounds, you tell me which one is different, one or three. And this time, uh, this test uh, acuity and also spectral information. So uh, I, we manipulated the pitch. So let, let's hear and tell me which one is different. The answer is obviously. <laughs> Uh, three, yes, three. Uh, and th this is actually the easiest one, actually. <laughs> so you, as long as you have a normal hearing, you should be able to hear. Okay, let's move on to the task two. Uh, all right, the first one, thank you so much. This is the uh, uh, difference. So the, the, the difference in pitch is only 7.5 uh, 7 hertz. This is the average difference that people can hear. So thank you. So you're average. Then <laughs> let's, let's move on to the last one, though. That one is the most difficult one. Probably we recruited uh, more than 2,000 participants, and there are very few people who could hear this level of difference in pitch. Actually, only one hertz. But let's let's listen. Accent, Oscar. <laughs> you got it. Very good. So uh, the one. Mm. Okay, so, so, so good news is you can do this in your research program now. And also the, we use the adaptive uh, mode, meaning that the computer will test you depending on how, how you perform a crack in crack, they will find out precisely how small difference you can actually hear. And the one test, so this is a pitch test. So one test takes like a less than five minutes. So it's, it's really a cost effective. Yeah. Uh, as well. So then on the top of that, we also created the, uh, uh, the task to measure integration. So all the motor integration and this time temporal information, so rhythm. So this task is also very, very simple. You hear the melody, uh, so, so in this case, rhythm three times, play it three times. And what you're asked to do is to repeat it. So uh, in a computer version, you use a space bar, but I'm gonna do some demonstration by using my, my hands, okay? And after that, you will try, of course. Uh, let's see. So now I need to try. <laughs> that may help, that may help, yeah. So then what's really cool is the computer will find out uh, how accurately you actually produce that rhythm. So now it's your turn. Okay? The first one was easy, although I didn't do well, but <laughs> anyway, the second one is a little bit difficult, but you can hear melody play, uh, sorry, rhythm play three times, you repeat back, okay? Let's get started. Okay, I wanna see your hands.
I love Elstra colleagues. <laughs> they, 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 they didn't give up. Thank you so much. Okay, excellent, excellent. So, uh, by the way, I just want to point out that this, this, this is very interesting. So, computer will find out. It takes probably uh, three to five minutes. Uh, and then, uh, how accurate, what percentage uh, uh, you can actually reproduce the, the sort of beats. Uh, and, and usually, people get somewhere around 70, 80% accuracy, but you can try it out. So I, uh, I can see some of my students actually coming from my, uh, from, from, from my module. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very lucky to have this opportunity to teach this MA module called Second Language Speech. So we have 10 weeks. Every week, we talk about my favorite topic, L2 speech. <laughs> so obviously, we can stop, you know, keep having a very good, good discussion. But one very particular aspect of my students is they are excellent, very good, they're, but they're all interested in teaching. So how to teach a second language English, in this case, pronunciation. So right after I introduced this test to my students, they came up to me and they really wanted to, to think of how to use these tests for the purpose of pedagogy. So how to actually improve the illustration in the classrooms. So then they impressed me with this uh, amazing research question. So let's use the auditory processing test to predict a profile match the L2 training methods. So people are different, benefiting from, differently benefiting from different types of instruction. So this is called the aptitude treatment instruction. So we've, we may be able to find a students who can benefit more from certain type of uh, training. So I'm gonna introduce the three MA students, their projects. And uh, the first one is the Yuji Shao. Uh, he, he, he actually published this paper in, in Tissot Quarterly. So what did he do? Uh, 45, he recruited 45 Chinese EFL students and uh, he provided one week of choral repetition training by using an app. Hmm. This is a very typical thing that you can, you, know, you can typically see in EFL classrooms. So that the students were asked to, to listen to models, sentences produced by native speakers by using up. So then they listen to the native speaker pronunciation model, then they repeat back. They can hear their own speech relative to native speaker model. So this is a core repetition, very typical uh, activity that, uh, in EFL classrooms. And this is obviously production based because you're always prompted to produce it. And then obviously this is a form oriented rather than meaning oriented. <clears throat> And the findings, we have already known that this type of core repetition training is effective. So we, we saw significant improvement among students, but what's really interesting was that though, their learning gains were, were actually also subject to individual variation. This individual variation was tied to the, uh, the integration abilities, but not the acuity. Mm. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, Ruyan Lin, uh, she conducted another uh, excellent study with the 42 Chinese EFL students. This time she provided 1.5 hours of recast training on English uh, low, front, uh, low front vowel app. So this vowel doesn't exist in Chinese phonetic inventory. Therefore, Chinese learners of English, they have a difficulty in pro pronouncing this vowel. So basically Ruyan let the students just freely talk, have you know, good conversations in English. But whenever they made errors on this particular vowel, ah, she jumped in and recast it. So this is how it goes. So I think it's a, it's a bed for children to read a, a Japanese anime. And then teacher jumped, so that Ryan jumped in and she said a, a bad. So that, that's, the, that's the way how, how things happen. So this is a very famous thing that you can see from L1 acquisition literature, when the mothers see their babies making grammatical errors, that's the way how they kind of respond. And then, you can see this is a perception base. So you hear, and also this is a, a meaning oriented because the from uh, oriented episodes happen in the middle of the uh, conversation. And again, we already know that this type of training is actually effective for a, a, a L2 vowel acquisition. But what's really cool about this study was that the, uh, she also found that those who actually benefit more from request training had a better acuity, not the integration. And finally, I want to introduce the Chao Kun's uh, um, uh, pay, uh, uh, project, 2021, uh, uh, published in Second Language Research. So she had a 50 Chinese MA students in London. So this time, her interest was actually those people who had been studying abroad in London for one year. And obviously, uh, so she did a cross-sectional analysis. So she checked their pronunciation. Obviously, the pronunciation was very different. Some of them really like native, like others still show a lot of you know, foreign accents. And then the findings. So the, uh, 
that the instance of advanced second language pronunciation proficiency among these particular participants was linked to both uh, acuity and integration. So uh, <clears throat> therefore, I, I want to kind of end this, this, this talk uh, sharing our MS students and my team's tentative conclusions. So, because now we are trying to adjust, adapt this paradigm to the more like classroom context. Uh, if you find out your participants or students have a more precise acuity, this could hint at the possibility that they may excel in input-based training when they receive input training, like a recast training. Uh, next conclusion is the more, if you find out your students actually have a, a more precise integration, like the like drumming thing that you, you, you did. And this could indicate that you know, they may actually benefit more from output-based uh, 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 training. And finally, if you find out you have both acuity and also integration, then it's, it's, good, it's good for you to, to, to do something. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah, move, move right now. So that, that's, the, maybe that's not the message, but anyway. So uh, that's it. So uh, thanks to the uh, funders uh, uh, that made all this project happen. And then thank you so much. And I'm very much excited to take on any uh, questions. And yeah, thank you.